Hey everyone, Sir Terma here again. And today we're gonna bring you some Trolls gameplay. I have seen some rumors on Twitter that Trolls is playable again. I don't know if I believe that. I think the hit to Imagine Possibilities was a little bit too much, right? Imagine Possibilities helps this deck way too much. We thought that the deck feels a lot weaker than it did before, right? Compared, you know, before rotation. But I still always love Trolls. It's one of my favorite decks in the history of the game. So I wanted to give it a shot and see if this deck actually makes sense in the current meta. So hope you enjoy the games of Trolls coming up soon. If you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. Enjoy the Trolls gameplay. In this matchup, we're going against Magin Bay playing Heimer Jays. Oh, okay. Uh, this is my second game against Hi uh, against Magin Bay today. Ah, I don't dislike this hand. I don't dislike this hand. I do feel like I need to have at least another troll though. So I might go frozen troll time in a bottle and try to find like Lysandra or Talia to be able to copy this frozen troll. Because it's too easy for the opponent to be able to aftershock this troll. And then I'm going to be really sad when they do that. So I will be very sad if they... Okay, well, I guess we can just go second person throw now and be okay. We'll go Rock Bear Shepherd. Yeah, Scrap Throne. Okay, so the Scrap Throne is really annoying. The Rock Bear Shepherd at least lets me get a blocker. Right? So at least lets me block it and then eventually gets another blocker here. We also have Lysandra that can also serve as a blocker. So we go Lysandra here. We'll have... Okay, the opponent just goes ahead and goes for the Soul Harvest. Let's go here. So... Ha! Huh. Let's go here, actually. Let's go like this. I need this avalanche. I think I need this avalanche for later, right? I need this avalanche for later. So that I'm able to deal with the opponent's um, elusive turrets. We'll take the sits here. So we'll take the sits here and we'll pass. And the reason that we can pass is because the opponent cannot tap out of the Inquisitor being able to kill them. So now we can just... I might just Talia instead. I might just Talia here and force the opponent to vengeance this Talia. So I like this Talia now, right? He gets me another throw that's gonna be a three. So even without this Inquisitor, I'm very close to just getting my throws enabled. We have enough blockers for the Scrap Tron. Opponent kinda has to vengeance Talia. Otherwise, they're just taking so much damage. I guess they can vengeance here. So they can vengeance here. And then open attack next turn. I want to keep this as a blocker into the scrap turn. I don't want to I don't want to lose this as a blocker. So I don't want to lose this as a blocker. Because I can block and then set up for like an avalanche. Ah, okay, so the avalanche doesn't even matter anymore. The avalanche doesn't matter because opponent has enough handlers that their elusive terrorists can just get over us. So it's going to have to be very nice. Fortunately, we also get the very nice. Opponent can still not tap out of the six mana without losing to this uh, Inquisitor. Okay, so we'll go like this. We'll play this avalanche. And I'm just playing this Avalanche to soften up that Scrapton before a third Handler comes down. And I still have enough to play Inquisitor if I need to. So I can still play Inquisitor if I need to. Let's force the Vengeance out. Let's force the Vengeance out. Before the opponent has a high man on the field. Piercing Darkness. Remember, we still have this very nice, and we're also going to have Lysandra on the field. Like a to do whatever we want. I 
I wonder if it's ever correct. To... No, no. I think I think we attack first. I think we'll attack first. We'll we'll push our four damage. We'll push up for damage if the opponent gets Ruination. So if the opponent gets Ruination, I'm very sad, right? So if this is a Ruination that they can get from 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 uh, the uh, the Heimer, uh, the the uh, Financier, I'm very sad because I won't have access to. I guess I still keep a throw, right? So even if the opponent has Ruination, I still have one throw. We could technically get another throw here. Hmm. So, if we pass the turn, this goes down to 1, this goes down to 0, this goes down to 2, this goes down to 7, if we then go down to 6, no, so we have to go like this, we have to go Curator, and we have to go Lysandra, Jace, okay, so... I absolutely just go for the very nice next, right? So the, whatever the opponent does, we're gonna go very nice. So whatever the opponent does, we're gonna go very nice. Have double throw, level of Lissandra here. Have another throw coming up after. If they go for the Ruination, they have the Ruination. They have to play around Ryan Negation. If he doesn't play around Ryan Negation, then I guess he's just better than me as well. This is actually so good because we can actually go sense of times. So now we can actually go sense of times into time in a bottle and get this throw to also be enabled for next turn. I think they have ruination, by the way. Based on that open attack, tells me that it's potentially ruination. But that still will leave me with two throws to attack with next turn because this would take it down to three and this would take it down to one so we can still fill our board with double throws and that would be exactly 16. it's funny how close we are to the watcher interesting use of tech okay I think we don't bury here, right? I think we don't bury. I think we just go Sands of Times. And advance this landmark by two. Advance this one by two again. We don't get the we don't get the right negation, so I think I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip and just look for the right negation. The opponent can challenge an aftershock to kill one throw. Otherwise, this is gonna be four throws that are gonna be attacking at once. We don't get the right negation, unfortunately. We just open attack and Now's just pray. Double vengeance. Hey, double that. vengeance. Okay, so double vengeance keeps keeps my uh, keeps me almost there, right? Keeps me almost there, but just not enough. And opponent can just shock last next turn. I guess we'll start the counter on another throw. <laughs> the Talia helps. The Talia helps potentially push that lethal damage. The opponent, a shot blast kills these two guys. Sansa Times will help me out a lot. Mystic Shot, Shock Blast. Okay, that's the Shock Blast. Okay, so I don't need to play the very nice just yet. I'm just going to play Talia. And now we're going to eat up a third Vengeance. Opponent has so much time here. Quietus on the throw. Once the opponent gets Heimer, it's going to get very dicey. We still have this very nice. Right, so we still have this very nice. Let's let them block. Their vengeance. Wow. They actually have all three, huh? I didn't check if one of those was from Financier. 
But I don't think it was because the Pinacia was the two shot barrage. So this is four damage. Okay. Five, seven, nine. Replicating the power spike. All right, so this is not horrible. All right, we'll go like this. But then next that we're still losing, right? Unless we top deck a freeze. So unless we top deck a freeze, next that we're still in a bad in a bad position. Um perfect. We get the harsh wins, we take five, seven, nine. We can get the watcher. We could get the the sweet smell of science. Sure beats the smell of burning workshop. How greedy do I get here? How greedy do I get here? So harsh winds, five, seven, nine, eleven. We lose to a shock blast again. I guess we can go because we can actually go. Okay, so I'm gonna let them develop, right? We're not losing to a shock blast because we can have sense of times and harsh winds to get us in a good spot. They finally get their Heimer. So they finally get their Heimer. Hold on. So let's think about this again, right? So with the sense of times, this deal zero, this will deal three, this will deal zero, this will deal two. That's five. We go down to nine. We harsh wins those two, and we're okay. I think we're in a good position. The opponent doesn't have Lito yet. We sent we harsh wins and sense of times. Get the next throw, play the watcher, and we could potentially bury nice next turn. To try to get the lethal, right? So we can open up with a very nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, now that the opponent did it this way, does the harsh wind still save me? So seven, nine, eleven. So that's gonna be eleven. That's gonna be eleven. No matter what, we're taking seven here. This sucks. I guess we could always have play sense. Like if the we could always play sense of times. <laughs> I think Magin is so scared. Like this passes and messing him up. So now that he did this, we can always go like this, right? So now we can always go like this. Advance this by four, get the watcher, and he still have access to harsh winds. So now that now that, now his attack is a lot worse than it would have been before. So now we have the blockers, right? I just need, I just need to wait for Magin to get as greedy as possible, right? So so once he got as greedy as possible, I think we were okay. So eight, so we freeze freeze. We take eight, we kill this two, we take ten, so we go freeze, freeze. We go here, we'll go here. We go down to four. We're not losing to a, sh a shot class because the opponent has no opponent has no Jace on the field. Now here's the question. We have to bury nice, right? We absolutely just bury nice first. That way we have two attackers. We're beating a single vengeance. Formula for the draw. Opponent has no hammer anymore, so they cannot get a burst speed blocker. They will need to summon a unit. Wait, but this is still. 
That's so annoying. That's actually so unfortunate, right? That's actually super unfortunate that, the, that he got exactly that. If we get another unit here, so here's the thing now, right? If we get another unit, this shepherd is gonna trigger the throw, right? There's so many ways that we can get this throw enabled. We get right negation instead. Ay, ay, ay. They get the last Heimer? They get another Heimer. Wow. We need to save this Shepherd, right? So we need to save this Shepherd no matter what. Because if this Shepherd that if we don't draw another unit, we just lose the game. We need to draw another unit here. So we need to draw another unit. Mystic? Okay. So we still we still live. We still live because of the quicksand. But the opponent gets the overwhelm blockers next turn. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the opponent gets the overwhelm blockers next turn, right? So Yeah, we have to block here. And I guess we can go like this. And it doesn't it doesn't even matter. The opponent gets the overwhelm blockers next turn. We need another unit. We need another unit to get our blockers here. So if we had another unit, we could have had. I guess we would have had our blockers. We still would have gotten value from the shepherd. Um hmm. Quicksand. Is there any out? Is there any out? There isn't, right? There isn't any out, because I need to be able to quicksand like one of these guys, I guess. Yeah, there's, there's no out anyways. No matter how I see it, there's no out. Another Mystic, we lose the game. What a game. Oh, what a game. I'm, ah, I can't believe that, man. A little late. And they top deck the Mystic. He top deck the mystic. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Last Heimer. Mystic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're back. We got 12 12s. And we draw the mystic shot just in case. Just in case. Who did it? even matter All right, I got to see it. I got to see it with my own eyes. Truly remarkable. It's over 9. Thank you Mass for the prime man. I appreciate the two months. 1038. Yeah. Yeah. The screen shot. Yeah. In this match we're going against Flaco, so Barris and Jats. Interesting. So we do play like very nice for later. Uh, we don't have any throws though, which is a little bit problematic for us. Okay, we get one throw, we get the harsh winds. I would like to not focus on the single throw if possible. Unless we get Talia, then we can duplicate it. But right now we don't have Talia. I guess we'll have the second throw on the field. So no Talia, no Lysandra. We get the Talia now. So, if that's the case, I'm gonna focus on this guy. I'm gonna focus on this guy and just duplicate it with Talia. And just get value that way. If the opponent doesn't get something that gives him two health, I'm okay with that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll block that. I'll block that next turn and then settle for the Avalanche. So I'll focus on this guy first. That will give me two throws, right? And then this third throw can come down naturally. And we can even duplicate Atalia again. So we pass, we block, we avalanche. I'm armed. Am I armed? 
Do we avalanche this guy instead of this guy? Like, which one do we think is better here? Okay, opponent made a decision for us, so they're gonna attack, pull this one. We'll go ahead and avalanche. I'm gonna keep the sense of times for when we can play Talia again. So I'll, I'll let them get the equipment back if they want. Oh, they're actually gonna save it? Interesting. So they're gonna save it instead. If we can get another, um, I know that if we can get a time in a bottle, that would be the ideal situation here. That's not a time in a bottle. I still think it's correct to duplicate this right now. Just be mana efficient. We can always play the Harbinger of the Trolls next turn. Or the Sands of Times as well. Even if Talia dies here, it just means that we get to play another Talia. So I'm okay with this, right? So I'm okay with this Talia dying. Because what's, what's going to happen now, right? So what's going to happen now is that we can play another Talia. Now, the problem here is that we might take too much damage. I mean, we do have the Harsh Winds. We do have the Harsh Winds. So we do have the Harsh Winds. I don't know that I'm scared of dying this turn. So because I'm not scared of dying this turn, I might actually go timing a bottle into Talia and then play the Harbinger of the Throws next turn. And just get all my throws in here. So this is 5, 9, 12. I guess I have to be scared of dying because if the opponent has another fish fight, they could actually kill my Talia. So 5, 9, 12, 13 actually. Hmm, maybe I am scared. <laughs> Maybe I am scared now that we're thinking about it. So, if we're saying that I'm scared, then the best thing I could do is just this, right? Then this is the best thing I could do. Just get a throw right now to have a blocker. Right? So if we get a throw right now to have a blocker, we can duplicate this frozen throw and be in a good position. Can the opponent... Die. Can the opponent actually... So if we go like this, right? Let's say we go like this. We can sense the times. I'm trying to see if they can actually kill us here. This score. So it is possible. So we're just gonna commit for the harsh winds instead and just go like this. Next thing we can Talia the frozen throw and then go for the Arvinger throws and we should be okay. So this still kills the barrows as well as reduces the five damage from the shepherd. And we have a three sisters coming in, right? So we don't need to Talia this turn. Because we're going to have the Talia copying the Troll into the Harbinger of the Trolls on our following turn. So we'll have three Trolls on the field and our opponent's going to have one less blocker. So we'll go like this. And then we'll go here. Our opponent could have the Freeze, right? The Unforgiving Call. But they only have one blocker. They're going to Fish Fight right now. Okay, they get another blocker. So that's the second Fish Fight. And again, we kind of expected a fish fight, right? That's why we didn't we didn't play Talia last turn, right? Because we were expecting the fish fight. The sense of times is gonna let me summon that next throw whenever we want to, even though the timing is off, right? This is three throws, and opponent has really no way to really kill them. And they tapped out the unforgiving call, right? So they're tapping out they're tapped out the unforgiving call. We can say opponent has no unforgiving call. We'll attack with everything, even the harbinger. Opponent has no good blockers for the Harbinger. The overwhelm means that we actually just win, right? This is 7, 14. So 7, 14, 20, 21. Even if the opponent block both. Yeah, so even if the opponent block all three throws and we didn't attack with the Harbinger, she's still having 21 damage. And that's game. Whew. Yeah, so just focus on getting multiple throws in the field. We got lucky with the double Talia draw and opponent killing our first Talia. 
and that ended up helping us out. So GG's. In this match, we're going against Shen and Jarvan. I think, I mean, I guess the barriers are really annoying. I was going to say, I think the opponent's going to have a hard time dealing with the trolls. The curator, Lysandra with curator and Talia doesn't sound bad to me. Like, this is not a bad hand to start with. We get the Battle Negation back, so I guess the game must really want us to have the Battle Negation available. So the Lysandra, keeping the Lysandra as our throw generator is not bad because she reduces the countdown of that throw by two. So it's the same thing as playing a throw on turn one, right? Uh, we'll go ahead and play this in turn one. Why not? We'll play the Curator so that we have a blocker for the Caretaker going forward. And then we'll play Lysandra. This quicksand is amazing because it's going to remove their barriers. So this throw is going to be the one that we're going to focus on uh, to duplicate with Talia. Inquisitor. All right. I might actually quicksand this. Oh, wow. No, I don't need to quicksand. That's a crazy attack by them. I think that was a really weird attack by them. If you didn't have the way to protect that. Huh. Huh. Let's drop this down. We don't care about the throw from the from the Inquisitor, so if this Inquisitor gets overridden, that's okay. We'll play Talia. Be able to duplicate this frozen throw. And we have a second Talia now, that's kinda cool. We'll go like this. So do we wanna play for this quicksand now? I don't know that I care about it right now. I think I'm gonna go like this. Let the opponent kill Lysandra. That's cool. And we'll play the Inquisitor. And that will give me three throws next turn, right? So by having the Inquisitor on the field, it's gonna give me three throws. We'll have Rider Negation and Quicksand to save it. And we're chilling. And opponent's gonna have a really hard time dealing with these triple throws. They could have Jarvan. And then we're just going to quicksend the Jarvan. So we'll quicksend the Jarvan. We also can quicksend the, uh, whatever the protector is, right? So again, we're still in a good spot here. Because the quicksend removes the barrier. We'll go like this and go like this. I guess a second form up. Let's then save this or moral support. Our wills align. That gives them the double attack, right? But it's still not enough to kill this throw. So it's still not enough to kill the throw, so I think I'm chilling. And if we open attack, we have Lysandra now as well. So we can open attack. We have the freezes. This is pushing a lot of damage. Your opponent's going to have to sacrifice some stuff. They have the second Shen. So I know they have the second Shen, right? They'll have the second Shen. And I want them to use that six mana now. Like, I'm, I'm okay losing these throws. I'll say yes to this. I thought he was going to play the second Shen, right? Like, there's no reason not to play the Stan United there. Absolutely no reason to not play the Stan United there. Wow. Wow. So now we can just go Talia. Duplicate this. That's the lowest throw. It's better than playing the Lysandra. Then we play Lysandra anyways afterwards. And we'll have access to the Ice Shards to be able to remove their barriers any single time that we want, right? So now we have Lysandra. And we're about to get the the, uh, the Watcher, by the way. Right? Like, if this Darkin throws... Uh, if this Inquisitor stays alive... It will summon two more trolls, and we'll get the Watcher enabled. We have Quicksand. Oh, we don't have Quicksand anymore, sorry. We have the Rider Negation to protect the Sandra. We have the Freeze, and we have the Ice Shard. I wear the crown. King Jarvan, all right. Its so Again, this doesn't matter because the Ice Shard removes the barrier. So the Ice Shard removes the barrier. If we go like this, we're still chilling. 
If your opponent tries to barrier, the, the ice shard still pops the barriers. Alright. And there goes the Shen, right? There goes the Shen. Next time we just go Watcher. And we chill. So we'll go Watcher. We have Ice Shard. Which means that we can pop the barrier on the Jarvan. So we're able to pop the barrier on this Jarvan. And we should be okay. We also have Very Nice, by the way. I think it's cute if we get the Watcher hit, so I'm not going to play the Very Nice. Because the moment I play this Very Nice, the opponent's just going to go ahead and, and, and surrender, right? So, at least we get to see the Watcher hit, lift them with three cards. Ice Shard to pop the barrier. Like, this is so good. The Sandra having the Ice Shard to pop the barrier. This is actually lethal with the Ice Shard too, by the way. So, this is actually lethal with the Ice Shard as well. Okay, not anymore. We'll go like this. That way Jarvan dies. And the opponent doesn't have the free cataclysms. I could have attacked with everything and won the game, by the way. I could also go for Entomb right here. I guess let's go for the Entomb. We already got to see the Watcher hit, right? We already got to see the Watcher hit. No reason to do anything else. This lets the this lets the other one go through. And that's game. Yeah, if we attack with everything, we also will have won without needing that, right? So, GG's. In this matchup, we're going against Pantheon and Jazz. So the equipment as the way to kind of buff up your Pantheon seems kind of cool, I guess. Uh, this Harsh Wings is really nice, but I feel like I want to... I want to find... It's going to be such a killer for them. That's going to be such a killer for all their equipment. I wanted to find a way to get the throws down earlier rather than later. So we'll go one throw here. Question here is, do we go for the second throw right now? So if we go second throw, we're buying ourselves a little bit of time. We're still gonna have two throws coming down at once. We'll play Lissandra. Why did the opponent not jam right away? Yeah, why didn't the opponent jam and get the value towards the Pantheon? So in seven turns, we'll get two throws. I feel like I feel like not jamming last turn was a mistake, right? So not using the jam last turn definitely was a mistake in my opinion. Now this Lissandra is still very vulnerable. I guess we can block. Okay, I might just avalanche actually if the opponent gets anything less than two health here. Yeah, let's just Avalanche here, prevent some damage. So this Avalanche lets us kill both units here. So we prevent some damage. We can take this three here. I don't think it's correct to block with the Lissandra yet. Okay, well, okay, opponent does the job for me. Because I was debating, I was like, do we want to block with Lissandra or not? I don't care. If you want to kill her right now, that's fine. Let's go ahead and play this last throw here. Now, I do still want to make sure that I get some of these throws sooner rather than later. You know what? Let's go like this. Let's force the opponent to have to have a fish fight to kill this Drachnor. So, they're forced to have a fish fight here to kill this Drachnor. We can always go Sense of Times next turn and be able to at least get one throw out. And this, this is a ticking time bomb, right? And I don't think the opponent can kill us before all these throws come down into the field. So the Scholar is not what you're looking for. Like, the opponent will literally need to go... The opponent will need to go... I guess they can buff this guy up. They can go... Buff, buff, fish fight. So then, if that's the case, we just wait and wait for the freeze, right? So since the opponent went this way, we can just freeze. Another option, we can go Sands of Times, but then the Sign of Time gets punished by... Now, I, I like the Freeze. I like the Freeze here. I don't want to do Entomb because the opponent could have a, a, a Spell Shield, right? So I like the Freeze instead. That still lets me get two throws here. 
I don't want to play this time in a bottle until I know how the opponent is going to react to this dark, to this Inquisitor. Now, they could still have access here. Nope, they have no access. I guess they could still have Fish Fry, right? Jamming to Fish Fry gets in there. No, we get double trolls. Okay. Double the trolls. Why do we say three trolls then? What if we go like this? Right? Let's advance this one four rounds. Then another two right here. Let's get ourselves our harsh winds. Protect ourselves for the rest of the game. And we just attack with three trolls. We're gonna get a fourth one here and we'll have the harsh wind to protect our units for the rest of the game. Oh, what if could have the um I guess the, the like how do they beat this? How do they beat this boar? We have that's the spell shield. So this spell shield that we talked about, right? So that's the spell shield that we talked about last time, and what we had to go through the uh with the freeze and not the entomb. You feel it too. We can bury nice on the following turn. This is gonna be another throw that we're gonna with the Inquisitor. Pell Cascade. So the opponent will get the Pell Cascade. So Pell Cascade. They also get the uh, Spans Protection and the other spell. They use a uh, they use uh, a Lord. Yeah, they use a Lord as well. So, but the opponent lost the equipment and goes down to one HP and loses the second equipment as well because their hand is full. So they get Pantheon. We have the Harsh Wind and we have Baby Nice, right? So at 16 and with both those answers and the opponent doesn't get the spell shield. They have a second spell shield here, so obviously the play is gonna have to be harsh winds. Opponent doesn't get challenger either. So no elusive, no challenger, no spell shield. We get another throw. Opponent's at one HP. They do get lifesteal. So they do get that lifesteal. They have to preemptively put the spell shield, right? So they have to preemptively put the spell shield. They get to heal eight because they'll be able to kill our um, throw. So they can preemptively kill the throw, right? Oh, they're going to kill two throws then, right? So they can kill two throws here, heal back to nine. And we say okay. Sure. Does it really matter? Does it like are we ever actually gonna get another throw in this game, right? Probably not, right? We can just go like this. Uh I'm more than likely just gonna bury nice next turn. So I'm more than likely just going to bury nice next turn and force out a second spell shield from the opponent. Because that will at least enable my harsh winds to be able to stop the Pantheon on the following turn after that. All right? So we can go like this. Now the opponent is going to be forced to have a strike here. Or have a second spell shield, sorry. Otherwise they lose the equipment. Okay, they never put an equipment, so it's really just losing this equipment. They don't get the Pantheon until the next attack. And then if they play the spell shield here, the risk means... Yeah, okay, so... Sure. What does that do for you? Oh, they just want to trigger the Pell Cascade. And maybe they want to get... They're looking for the spell shield, I'm guessing, right? That gives them an extra heal from the Blacksmith. And they were looking for the spell shield, didn't get it. If they get another Pantheon here and have Lifesteal, that could be annoying. We won't be able to copy Tal uh, the, the, the Landmark, right? Because this is going to trigger with the Inquisitor. When it has nothing, so we just win the game, right? The Spell Shield definitely made things super scary. But we just have so many throws coming in too quickly for the opponent to, to do anything. So GG's. In this match, we're going to gain D. Ooh, um... Actually, I mean, do I care? Like, 
What is the deep player doing that's going to get me scared? As much as I like the Inquisitor and the Shepherd, I think I need to look for a troll, right? I need to look for a troll early. So at least we get the Harbinger of the Trolls. I need to have a troll early, right? I think the, um, the Rock Pet Shepherd is good, but without a troll early, it's not really doing a lot for us. Is there a world where playing this Harbinger of the Trolls is better... Like, I was, I'm trying to think if it was better to play this as a discount or throws by one. Okay. This is not bad. So we can discount all the throws by one. And then copy with Talia. And have Inquisitor as well coming down later. And this should create a scenario where we have a lot of throws that are going to be coming down, coming down to the opponent like really quickly. Okay, so we'll go here. We'll advance everything by one. We'll copy this five Castro. Have Tali on the field. And then play the Inquisitor. Okay, now we can just kill Maokai too. Uh, okay. Sure. I mean, you want to give me the Maokai kill? Okay. Sure. I, th I think people forgot that, you know, I'm in Frelia and I can actually run Avalanche. Uh, that's a little bit confusing. <laughs> I, won't, I won't deny that. Quietus? Okay, you get to kill my Lysandra. You just gave me space for my Inquisitor to be able to actually give me an additional throw. So I'm A-OK -okay with that. Uh, we gotta go here. And then we, we kind of copied this one in case that the Inquisitor dies. This will still be low enough to get me two throws before the opponent can get to their big combo turn. Uh, this time, I don't know that I actually want to attack into the Maokai. We'll just play the Inquisitor. Let's make sure that we can level up this, this uh, Talia. Opponent just tapped out of Banyan, so... I guess I need to be careful, right? Opponent could have access to the to the three mana the three mana uh lifesteal. Why not attack with everything else? I'm so confused. So now we play Inquisitor. So even if the opponent has the drain. No, the drain is only two. The drain is only two. Why why did I think the drain was three? The drain is only two, so they would never have been able to kill Talia. So we just attack here. Attack for A. Honestly, let's just throw the Inquisitor in there as well. Opponent is so far from being deep. That this Inquisitor is still going to be able to push damage. Probably should have thrown Talia in there too, to be honest. Okay, one Vengeance, and that's 16. We still have two more throws, and another one coming down soon. I guess if we throw Talia in there, opponent just blocks with the Maokai, so not necessary. Um, hmm. Sure, let's go Curator. We can potentially get this lower. I guess if we went Rock Bear Shepherd and then Curator, it would have been enough. Oh, they get to stop Talia. I'm so sad, apparently, guys. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. They get to stop our Talia. Kill this two. Oh yeah. They they just giving us everything. They even gonna give us the Talia level up. Oh man. So they even gonna give us the Talia level up and an additional throw. So then we get to attack. Talia level up. Two throws. Opponents at two HP. You don't wanna give me the board space, right? You definitely don't wanna give me the board space. Just in, just in case of this reason in specific. You get to go deep next turn. You need to have another vengeance. And even that might not be enough. So even if you have another vengeance, that's probably not enough. I don't care attacking with the Inquisitor because we have a second one. So vengeance here. But then you have now you have to vengeance Talia. And then also be able to vengeance the throw. And you only have not enough. I think opponent lost the game when they at when they attack with the Maokai, right? And allow me to have the the, the vengeance. Uh, to allow me to have the avalanche. They almost got there. They almost got there. 
but the Talia level up just completely any any chance that they had of staying alive was stopped by the Talia level up. So GG's. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's game of thrills. I had a great game there against Magic Bay, the first one that you saw. Um definitely, definitely super close. I, I don't know. I don't know what I could have done better there to win that game. I think, you know, like I, like I was talking at the end, I don't know if it's better to have attack with the with the uh, Watcher first to make their formula be a dead draw. Because if I attack with the Watcher first, right, and then they play their Heimer, assuming they have their Heimer in their hand already, or maybe they just threw it there at the end, because I'm going to have to play the Berry nice no matter what, right? I'm going to have to play the Berry nice that turn no matter what happens because I need to buy myself time to be able to actually survive. If I if I just don't do anything, then I just lose in the open attack, right? I will need to play very nice no matter what. Which means that the opponent can play like a Heimer after my attack with the with the with the Watcher and then be able to still get value from Heimer with the elusives. I guess that they have the quicksand. So probably the play had to be open with the Watcher. I, I just can't predict that they have formula in their hand, right? But maybe the attack maybe the play was attack with the Watcher, right? They force a block out of the opponent. Then they go for Heimer, assuming, right? Or whatever card they have left in their hand. They play Heimer, and once they play their Heimer, because they have Formula and another card in hand. So if that other card was a Heimer, then we could potentially bury nice after that. And even if they get the Formula off, that would have left them with just an Elusive Turret and nothing else. And then we have Quicksand to be able to deal with the Elusive Turret after. So that, that's the only thing I can think of. I guess they also have the Mystic Shot to burn us out anyways. Uh, but we also did have the right negation that we topped like, after that. So it would have allowed us to, to kind of play around the Mystic Shot burn that the opponent might have had. It definitely would have been a very, very tough situation. I think it would have been a very tough turn, no matter how we played it out. Uh, but, you know, that's how the game goes sometimes. I thought at the, at, the, at, the, at the time it made sense. I didn't play around the production search. And there was a chance that the production search could have given him just a single turret. Uh, unfortunately, they gave him the two turrets. They didn't give him the barrier turret, the seven cost turret which would have been lucky on our end. So, yeah. But all the other games, you kind of get to see what throws can do. You just, you want to focus on multiple throws. You want to focus on multiple throws, try to get as many throws as possible out around the same time. So then you can create like a really big attack that the opponent cannot defend. A single throw is a lot easier to be dealt with compared to multiple throws. So that's why you saw me trying to, how, how can I get multiple throws out at once instead of just single throw? And that's kind of the strategy that you want to go for. Uh, the deck doesn't feel great. I, I lost way more LP than I gained while recording this video. So I don't recommend playing it unless you just really enjoy throws and want to have fun. It just feels like it's, it's too slow, right? Like without imagine possibilities, you're not able to really get to that game plan where you can advance those throws a little bit further than it would have before. So just be a little bit careful of that. Um, it is, again, it is a problem not having that imagine possibilities. I think it's probably the biggest loss that this deck will have faced. But again, if you like throws, I think there's a playable version of it into certain car into certain decks, especially some of the like, decks like this Pantheon decks that you saw us going against, because we do have access to the freezes and we do have access to them be able to kind of go wide with these big 8A units, and they have a hard time dealing with that when we're able to use some of multiple throws. So yeah. In terms of mulligan, you always want to look for at least one throw in your opening hand. Whether it's the Sandra or Frozen Throw, those are usually the best two that you can get. But the Harrier of the Throws is a close third if you don't get one of the other two, right? So if I only see a Harrier of the Throws and I don't see the Sandra or Frozen Throw, then I probably have to keep it so I can start getting that throw, start counting down for my Talia value as the game goes on. Uh, but for the most part, the Sandra and the, and the regular Landmark is what you want to look for to begin with. I think that'd be it for me today. It was a long video because of a long game against Magin Bay. Hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. Uh, you can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Return. We stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.